selfish, violent, cruel, aparaprakriti functioning within us. When we are compassionate, loving and peaceful, aparaprakriti is functioning within us. It is for us to change from one to the other. That is where human freedom comes. No animal can do it. No nature can do it. But that higher nature that manifests in the human system, that can transform the operation of Sabhava from the ordinary to the extraordinary. That is the uniqueness of man. He must exercise that power, that freedom. So this body and mind will be the playground only of that higher power, that higher privilege, not the lower privilege. This is our responsibility. In the Devi Mahatmya, this is beautifully expressed in many places. The Divine Mother is called that Adya Prabhupada, that Parah Prabhupada, and the whole universe is her energy manifestation, Shakti manifestation. Sri Ramakrishna will say, whenever you are conscious of yourself and the external world, you are within the jurisdiction of Shakti, this divine property. Whenever you go into deep samadhi, then alone you go beyond the Shakti jurisdiction. So, Shakti jurisdiction extends throughout the universe, everywhere, in external nature, in man, at various levels. But when we come to the nirvikatpa state of samadhi, going beyond all the duality, then you go beyond Shakti to that Shiva nature that is eternal, without change, and what they say, that is the nature. But till then, we are all within the jurisdiction of Shakti, Adya Shakti, or Para Shakti. So here three words are used, Kalavatri, Maharatri, Moharatri. Ratri means darkness or night. What is the darkness of delusion? Moharatri, the darkness of delusion, night of delusion. And Maharatri, very thick darkness of ignorance and misunderstanding. And then Kalaratri, frightful night. Sometimes you pass through, pass through frightful experiences. All due to delusion. All that is because of the Atri. There is no light, there is no knowledge, there is no illumination. That's also the same probability. Say for example in a piece of stone, it's absolute darkness. There is no consciousness, nothing coming out. There you can see that kind of darkness of delusion. In us also, every now and then, we will find this darkness of delusion and doing all sorts of evil in that condition. Mother is praying in that particular way in you and me. But the other way is what we are asked to do. Let Mother's higher energy, the, the Paraprakriti, let it manifest to us. We have to do it. We have the freedom to do it. Let people realize this great truth. We are free to allow Aparaprakriti to play in us or Paraprakriti to play in us. That must be the first truth we must realize. Don't say it's all destiny. I can change. I can change the play from one to the other. In this way, avidya maya, vidya maya. Everything is in maya. One is avidya, the other is vidya. Let vidya maya be within me. When you try to help people, you are influenced by vidya maya. When you try to injure people, you are influenced by avidya maya. The heart is a playground for either of them. And we are responsible. The human being has a sense of ethical responsibility. Animals have no responsibility. They are not subject to ethical judgment. If you go near an ass and he gives you a kick, you can't say you are a bad ass. He is ass, that is all. He is no good, no bad. That is his nature. 
utility, yes, because it's so nature. In us, there is that as nature, and yet a higher nature also. He can control that as nature. If a man comes near me, I did not dump on him. I can shake hands, I can smile. It is up to me to do this way or that way. Sabhavastu pravartate. Sabhava in this sense means that lower nature. That is activating us to do this and that. The higher nature also can activate us. Then great character comes. Great spiritual development will come. That is how the word Prakriti, Sabhava, is used in this Devi Mahatmyam and much of Sri Ramakrishna's teaching. Brahman and Shakti, Brahman and Maya, Shiva and Shakti, they are one and the same. But the Shakti aspect is what made for this manifestation of the universe. When Shakti pulsates, the universe comes into being. When the Shakti becomes quiescent, the universe is withdrawn. In fact, one of the most beautiful truths of Sankhya philosophy is whenever the three gunas are in perfect equilibrium, there is no universe. That is what is called pralaya. The whole universe is withdrawn into its primordial nature. What a beautiful conception. And when does manifestation begin, creation begin? When there is a slight disturbance in the equilibrium of the three gunas, then the process starts. What you call it? The creative process, the manifestation process starts. Then all the uni uniformity that existed before becomes diversity. What was one becomes many. That is put in the Upanishad statement by saying, suppose that primordial reality, that background material of modern astronomy, were to say what it experienced, what would be the language? That's what Upanishad says. Eko ham bahusyam. I am one, let me be many. In that primordial background stuff, which exploded and became the universe, the concept of the Big Bang, as they call it in astronomy, when there was no Big Bang, everything was uniform, absolutely, what you call, a very unified structure, no differentiation within. That is the state of Prakriti originally. Then, a little disturbance in equilibrium takes place. That sets in differentiation. These atoms and molecules never existed there. Not even the atomic forces. None of these you will find in that primordial background material. But a little disturbance takes place in that uniformity. Then it explodes. Then more and more differences come. And that differentiated state is called the universe. And when this differentiation goes away, again the forces become unified. It becomes that background material where there is no creation, there is no universe. These are beautiful ideas in our cosmology which very much echoes the great ideas of cosmology today. Only we had one step more advanced in this matter. We found a place for consciousness in this background material which much of modern astronomy doesn't find place for. But some astronomers are trying to find a place for consciousness. That's what I refer to once here, Fred Hoyle's later book, The Intelligent Universe. Till now we were dealing with unintelligent universe. Now we are dealing with an intelligent universe. If modern astronomy continues in that line, they will come to exactly what the Sankhya's and the Dantes have discovered here. In that primordial state, everything is one. There is no two there. Ekameva, Advitiyam, Brahma. Brahman, that ultimate reality, is one alone and not two. That Brahman became differentiated in this universe. The Shakti aspect of Brahman. 
that is called the Parashakti, the Divine Mother. We call it Pragrati, Parapragrati, or combination of Apara and Parapragrati. That sloka will come probably in the seventh chapter and Shankara's commentary. Very beautiful commentary is there. So, this Bhavastra Pravartate, when we speak of Sabhava, we must realize the divine dimension of that Sabhava. That Sabhava which is very dull, dead matter in ordinary physical terms, it is entirely the nature of that pure consciousness in action, in the Shakti form. It becomes dull, dead matter on one side and consciousness and conscious beings on the other. Therefore, Prakriti has two dimensions, the unconscious and the conscious, the Jada and the Chit, both are there in Prakriti. When Gita refers to our activities, Gita refers to that Jada Prakriti, Sabhava. Sabhava is I think for you and me, but don't be frightened by Sabhava. That very Sabhava is the manifestation of the Divine Mother. What is a frightful thing becomes your own Mother, the Mother of the Universe. That is how in India we have the feminine aspect of the Divine, the Divine Shakti. From her the Universe has come. She maintains this Universe. These ideas come in many verses in the Devi Mahatmya. Eternal feminine is a beautiful phrase used by Goethe, the German poet and dramatist, in his book The Faust. That last line of the Faust is simply wonderful. The eternal feminine leads us on and on. That is the last line. Goethe must have read Indian philosophy. By that time, a lot of Indian books were going there and many English translations of Shakuntala and other books also had gone there. So this concept, the eternal feminine, leads us on and on, is exactly that divine Shakti which is behind this whole universe, that Para Shakti. What a beautiful conception. My divine mother, Sri Ramakrishna will say again and again, everything is under the jurisdiction of my divine mother. They call it Kali. Many other names are there. These names are nothing. O oh, black mother, have none sung thy praise. I shall sing thy praise, O oh, mother. This is by Walt Whitman of America. He also sings similarly. Dark mother, concept of Kali. So, you can view the universe as a combination of Brahman and Shakti, Shiva and Shakti. Shakti is feminine, so we call it the Divine Mother, from whom the whole universe has come, who withdraws the universe into herself. That is how the concept of God as Mother came into Indian thought. In no other thought is there so prominent, the more primitive thoughts or thoughts of primitive peoples as a place for the mother goddess. But philosophically, spiritually developed idea of the concept of mother as God has come only in this country with the help of Vedantic thought. That is why even Shankaracharya speaks of the Divine Mother as supreme in many of his songs and poems. So, the Gita here referred to that particular idea, God has not prescribed any work for you, any fruit of work for you, but Sabhava Stuk Pravartate, Sabhava that is in you, making you work this way, that way. This Sabhava is nature in its ordinary form. We are here to overcome that nature and build up the higher nature that is waiting to find an expression. That is para prakriti, superior prakriti, and both together constitute 
the totality of the cause of the universe. That's what Gita will say in the seventh chapter. So Sabhavastuk Pravartate, Navarte Kasya Jitpavan, Nakaiva Sukatam Vibhukum, Ajnane Navadam Jnana, Tena Mukhyanti Jantavaha. The next yoga, 15, says, says, the, the divine does not take the papam or sin of anybody, nor the punyam or the merit of anybody. The truth is, atyanena avutam jnanam. Jnana is hidden by atyanam. Jnana illness is hidden by atyanam. The result is, tena bhukhyanti jantaba. All beings are under delusion because of that. Jnana overcome by Ajnana. That produces delusion. And it is all in delusion that we do this life and all the evil deeds we do there through that delusion. This must be overcome. How? The next shloka says 16. Jnana enatuta patjnanam yesham nashata matmanaha tesham adityavat jnanam prakashiyati tatparam through jnana, when this ajnana is overcome, jnana enatu tat ajnanam, yesham nashitam, in whom it is destroyed, atmanaha, within oneself, tesham, to such people, adityavat, just like the sun shining in the sky, lighting up the whole world, prakashiyati tatparam, the ultimate reality is revealed by the jnana, no more delusion. We have sent away delusion, destroyed it. The world is destroyed. Nāsitam, ātmana. Every day, what do we do to destroy our delusion? We increase our knowledge, increase our understanding. Wherever there is light, there is no darkness. They can't coexist. Because there is darkness, we are deluded. If there is no darkness, we won't be deluded. So, we increase knowledge and discrimination and understanding thus overcome the ignorance that is there, delusion that is there, and the delusive actions that we do. All these things are overcome by jnana. Jnana yatu tabajnanam yesham nashitam atmanaha in whom it is destroyed by oneself. Teshaam to such people, Adityavat, Jnanam Prakashirati, Sun hidden by a cloud or dark, but soon as the cloud goes away, sun shines again, lighting up the whole world. So also this Jnana will destroy Ajnana and all the delusion that comes out of Ajnana and it realizes the Supreme Reality itself, Prakashiyati Tattaram, that Supreme Reality is illumined by this Jnana. So Jnana is a theme. In the fourth chapter also it was a theme. Here also it is a theme. But spiritual, here it means spiritual knowledge, not book knowledge. We may have any amount of scholarship that doesn't make for even the slightest what you call illumination. It is only scholarship and nothing else. Ramakrishna speaks of a Dharma about this type of mere intellectual knowledge. How it cannot save you from this life of delusion that is you by. A man can be very intellectual and also very selfish, very quarrelsome, very intriguing. All this can go together. Why it is illumination? Here intellectualism won't do. So this is Ramakrishna's very famous parable. A number of people got into a boat to cross a river. Among them was a philosopher, an intellectual. So when the boat was moving, he asked the boatman, My dear boatman, have you studied psychology? No sir, I have not studied. After some time, he said, you are 25% of your life is a waste. You didn't study psychology. Then after some time again, have you studied philosophy? 
No, sir, 50% of your life is a waste. One by one he went on. Next time he asked, have you studied also biology? No, sir. Then 75% of your life is lost. He said like that. Very proud, intellectual, telling to the poor, ignorant person, this kind of thing, people were watching. Then came a storm and the boat started walking. And the professor became very much worried. What is going to happen now? And the poor boatman asked the professor, Do you know symbology? No, sir. Hundred percent of your life is gone, you see. <laughs> so that is the wonderful idea we have always emphasized in India. Mere intellectual knowledge is of absolutely no use except for Delhi. You can get a job and get money. No other illumination can come out of it. That comes from a deeper source. This is the uniform teaching all over India and all over the world in the world of religion. Here intellectualism is not religion. You have to realize the truth for yourself. So Ramakrishna has compared great intellectuals and scholars to kites flying high up in the sky. You have seen sometimes 5,000 feet high, the kites will be gently flying. Yes, they fly very high. But why is there a finishing? Some dead body below the earth. They are always looking at that only. So they are flying high. Their attraction is towards dead bodies lying on the earth. So that's the nature of mere intellectualism, he said. So this jnana is spiritual illumination, awakening. That alone can destroy delusion. Delusion cannot go by book reading, by scholarship, not at all. In fact, it may increase also. That kind of delusion, a pride is added, arrogance is added to other types of delusion. So, realization, anupala, a little bit. Vivekananda said, in humor, if man has seen even a ghost once, it is far better than all the intellectual knowledge. Something beyond this physical thing you have seen there. Even, even a ghost, if you can see, that is something higher, you say. The meaning is, this intellectualism gives you only knowledge of sense data. Whatever the senses can do, it can make you understand about it. Nothing higher than that. So what is needed is to go from intellect to I may write a book and get a PhD degree, but if you ask him, do you know how to love? That I don't know. I know about love. I can write a good deal, but I don't experience love at all. Then what's the use of that wonderful scholarship? In all departments, this is true. Just like you write a book on citizenship, but you yourself do not behave like a citizen. What's the use of that knowledge of citizenship? You know about love but behave lawlessly all the time. What's the use of that law? You study science, but no scientific thinking, no scientific attitude. What's the use of that science? In all these matters, being is more important than mere knowing. You may know a thing, but you must become that thing. You must realize it, you must experience it. Therefore, they say, that jnana overcomes the jnana. And as the sun illumines the whole world, the ultimate reality is revealed to you through that jnana. This is a very great statement in that 16th verse, 14, 15, 16. Then comes verse 17, one of the wonderful verses full of meaning you will find here in this particular section. Tat buddhaya, tadatmana, pannishthana, tat parayanaha, gachanti, apudaka buddhim, jnana buddhuta kannasavata. That is a remarkable verse that is here. Tat buddhaya, our mind, our buddhi is devoted to that. That supreme reality. Tat buddhaya, tadatmana. That is your own self. Tannishthana. That is your constant discipline. 
Sattarayanaha. That is the final goal of all your endeavor. Because Sat comes in all this. Sat Buddha, Sat Atman, Sat Nishtha, Sat Parayanaha. Then, Gachanti, Apunara Vrutti. Those who are of that nature, they reach the state from which there is no rebirth. There is no samsara. Gachanti, Apunara Vrutti. How? Jnana Nadhuta Karnashaha. All the evils of the mind, all sins, impurities are destroyed through jnana. Jnana and dhruta kalmasha. All kalmashas, evils, are virdhuta, destroyed through jnana. Therefore he is able to achieve that supreme state from which there is no return, a constant birth and death like a wheel going on. We are a helpless victim in it. That won't happen to him. He becomes free. He becomes free. This is a preliminary statement. As Shloka later, the greatness of that achievement is shown that you get it here and now, not in some future life, not in some heaven, here itself, in this life, in this body, we can come to this state of realization that non-birth state, that you are truly free, truly free. In birth and death we are not free. Just like a potter takes clay, puts it on his wheel, makes pots, goes on, goes on, goes on. Clay has no say in the matter. We are like clay in the, in the hand of nature, just putting it this way, that way. But that will end for you. You become free. Nobody can shape you. You are your own master. Swarajya, as they call it, this wonderful idea in Vedanta. Swarajya Siddhi. Sankaracharya refers to it. Swarajya Siddhi. You become your own master. No outsider he is going to dictate you. That is why spiritual freedom, spiritual realization. And the method is this, Padbuddhaya. The buddhi is fixed on that. Tadatman, Tanishtha, Tatkarayana. That is my goal. I am constantly aware. That is the goal. Not this petty little achievements every day. That is the supreme goal. Such a person, Gachanti, attains. Apunaravarti, Napunaravarti, means birth and death. Repeated birth and death is called Apunaravarti. All samsara. Samsara means that which moves constantly, like a chakra. That's called through saru to move in Sanskrit. That kind of constant movement, helplessly, that doesn't come to that person. Kachanti Abhraavati. Abhraavati actually means also moksha, real spiritual liberation. That is the highest state for man. Man alone can achieve that perfect freedom, freedom of the spirit. Many other freedoms we seek, freedom from hunger, from thirst, from illiteracy, all these things we seek, these are all needed at our ordinary level of life. But even there, the supreme freedom is freedom of the spirit. Suppose you are fed well and given good food, good clothes, good housing, but you are a slave under a master. And what fun is there? That those things have no value. The most important thing is freedom. I don't have it. I want to be free. That infinite urge in man finds its consummation in this spiritual realization. I am the Atman, ever free, ever pure. That's my true nature. No delusion is making me fall down from that state. That delusion has been burned away, destroyed. Jnana Urdhuta Kalmashara. All Kalmashas have been destroyed through Jnana. Then this freedom becomes a fact. Now it is only an ideal. I want to be free. But at that stage it becomes a fact of experience. I realize I am free. I am free. Vedanta doesn't speak of salvation. It speaks of freedom. Are you free? Are you free? Learn to be free. Even within the limits of day-to-day -day life, we can be free. 
you can express that freedom. What a beautiful idea, a free mind, a free life. If it is genuine, it will never harm somebody else or freedom. If it is not genuine, it may have another wish. But real freedom is what enhances freedom of others as well. Be free, be free, be free is the constant exhortation of Vedanta to all humanity. So here is that great word. I like the way it is put. Tat buddhaya, tat atmana, tat nishthana, tat parayana, vichyanti, apunaradhim, jnana buddhuta karmasha, jnana destroys all karmasas. Yesterday I have done a sin. Ten years ago I have done a sin. All these will be destroyed when a bit of jnana comes. But Ramakrishna said, if a room or a cave is dark for a thousand years, does it take a thousand years to light it up? Just like a matchstick, instantly all darkness goes away. Immediately it becomes lighted. That's the nature of knowledge. That's why our whole culture praises knowledge very high. And India was so devoted to knowledge. Every type of knowledge, early knowledge and spiritual knowledge. Up to a thousand AD, this country was very devoted to the acquisition of knowledge and to expansion of human life. Later on came a contraction of human life. A contraction which went to almost to the point of death national death in the 18-19 centuries. Out of that, we have come out. Now again, we are in that expansive state. This philosophy will sustain us in this great struggle. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Out of that will come excellence of character, excellence of work, excellence of conduct. All will come. This is how we build up a new destiny for ourselves. That is the importance of this wonderful statement. It may refer to the great sadhaka who realizes this truth, but it may refer to you and me at our level also, at every level. Any greatness in any field will depend upon this sense expressed in this particular verse. Verse 17, tad buddhe, tad atmana, tad nishtham, tad parayana. You are an artist, or you want to make money through industry, you have to be constantly at it. Tat buddhaya, tat atmana, tat nishta, tat parayana. Then you will achieve wealth, power, knowledge, and every other type of greatness in life. But if it is directed to the Supreme Divine, then you become free in this very life. That is what he is going to say later on in this very life. So, Gachanti Abhunaravarti, Punaravarti means coming back once again. Apunaravarti, no more coming back. When you are dead, you have become free. Body has gone that soil. You are ever free. A burnt seed, you put in the soil, it won't sprout again. So also, jnana burns away. All karmasha within the system, then that entity cannot be reborn again because all its things inside have been burned away through the power of jnana. So that is how this is constantly emphasized. Freedom, freedom. Not in a future life. In many aspects of our teaching, in the beginning, it is always told freedom you get in the future life. After you die, somehow you live, you have achieved some spiritual development and real freedom to wait in a future existence. That was changed. In Vedanta came this profound teaching, even mukti, even mukti, freedom while being alive. And that is what is being proclaimed in the Gita, in the Upanishads, Shankara's writings today. Sri Ramakrishna Swami Vivekananda. What's the use of living a wretched life and getting a future blessed state later on? Why not now? Why not enjoy the best here, freedom here? That is the thinking 
that motivated these great philosophers. So having said this, the next sloka is marvelous. That is the soul of this Gita. Next and next. When is that stage? How do you express that stage? That is expressed in these words. Vidya Vinaya Sampadne Brahmane Yogi Hastini Shinichaiva Shapakeja Panditas Samadarshinaha. You become a Pandita, not a scholar. One whose knowledge has grasped the truth of the Atman. That is called a Pandita. A Pandita is Samadarshi. He is all with an equal eye. No high and low in his eye. Everybody is the same Atman in every one. That is expressed with a little more of detail by saying Vidya Vene Sampane Brahmane. In a Brahmana, who is considered to be generally pure and holy, if he is endowed Vidya and Vinaya, knowledge and humility and culture, in such a Brahmana, Gavi in the cow, Hasti in the elephant, Shuni in the dog, Shapaka, who is the dog, what you call in our older way of social thinking, the Chandala. In all of them, Brahmana, there is Pandita, Samadarshana. The Pandita sees all as equal. That Brahmana and the dog, she doesn't make any distinction. Why the same Atman in all of them? So distinctions vanish. In ignorance, you find difference between things. In knowledge, you find unity. There's a great truth in Vedanta. Ignorance leads to diversity. Knowledge leads to unity. This will be discussed in the 17th, 18th chapters also later on. Sattvic knowledge, rajanic knowledge, tamasic knowledge. In sattvic knowledge, your knowledge goes to the unity behind the diversity. So, Panditas Samadarshina, Panditas of this nature who has who have destroyed ignorance by jnana or knowledge, they are endowed with equal vision. They see all as equal. Our senses reveal diversity, but knowledge reveals unity. Even in physical science, take all the various items of experience in any particular scientific field. Everything is different from each other in the beginning. As you investigate, you find basic unity emerging between things. Ultimately, we are going to discover the ultimate unity behind the whole universe. That is what Einstein wanted to do physics in modern times. He did not achieve it. But science is at it. The unified field theory, we can explain everything. That's called unity. So in this case, what he sees is not something like a physical unity. He sees unity in Brahman, from whom the universe has come, who exists in this universe, and to whom the universe returns. That Brahman, the infinite, the pure, Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Brahma. That Brahman he sees in every being and every product of the cause, the cause is present. That is the logic. In every product of the cause, the cause is present. Cause and effect are non different. These are all Sankhya dicta accepted by modern scientific thought. So, if the world has come from Brahman, I have realized the Brahman in myself and I look out, I see the same Brahman everywhere. So Vidya Vinaya Sampadne Brahmane. It is easy to see God in a person who is holy and pure. But how to see him in a dog, in an ordinary person, even a criminal, in a prostitute? How is it possible? Yes, this man has achieved that universal vision in Ramakrishna's Gospel, you will read, he saw Brahman, the Divine Mother, Shakti, in dogs, cats, in other human beings, 
in a prostitute standing there, in every one of them, and he saluted every one of them. In our own time, these are not words, these are not theories, these are been demonstrated again and again. The Shloka of the Gita, Vidya Vinayasam Panne Brahmane Gavi Hastini Shunichaiva Shapakecha Pandita Samadarshina Pandita Sar Samadarshi. So Samadarshitva is a profound message of the Gita. And in a democracy, it is the very soul of a democracy, Samadarshitva. Any kind of hierarchical consideration goes against the spirit of democracy. Some of the shitva is there. Here, in the Vedanta and this chapter of the Gita, this is a big theme. Some of the shitva, some of the shitva. The eyes cannot reveal the some of the shitva. Eyes reveal only differences. But the mind, when it becomes pure, can penetrate through these appearances and discover the pulsing unity behind the diversity. That is man's capacity. So such a person is called a pandita. Panda means atmanashaya buddhi panda. Buddhi, that is the atman for its object of knowledge, is called panda. He who has that buddhi is called a pandita. But a high meaning this word has. Pandita Samadarshina. Samadarshi. Vivekananda was very fond of this wonderful expression, Samadarshi. And he had an experience of it when he was in Ketri, Maharaja's palace, during his wandering days. One notch girl, good singer, came to sing in the palace. Maharaja sent word to Swamiji, please come, you will love this music, she sings very well, please come. Swamiji said, I am a sannyasi, why should I go to listen to a notch girl's music? First reaction of Swamiji was bad. But the Maharaja insisted, implored, Swamiji finally came and he sat and she started singing and then she took a song of Sudas. That song's main theme is this Samadarshitva. Mere to avaguna chitta na dharo. Samadarshiho naam tihar. O Lord, don't look upon my evil qualities. Thy name is same sightedness. Thy name is Samadarshi. Then if she sings further, various samples are taken, the water is there in a uh, uh, passage, in a small water passage, then water is there, the Yamana, then both fall into the Dharga, both become holy. So don't look upon my evil qualities, thy name is same sightedness. Swami, so when he heard the song, he was deeply impressed. And he said, I am a sannyasin, I made a distinction between this person and that person, that this is a notch girl, this is somebody else, etc. She has taught me real Vedanta today. And when the music was over, she came to make pronounce Swamiji, Swamiji blessed her. That story Swamiji himself says. So the song was appropriate for that occasion. This girl has taught me a great lesson. Some other she who naam ke Therefore, this whole country needs to understand this truth, some other shitva. Because all our social life is riddled through the opposite of it. We have never had Samadarshitva. Only they call Asamadarshitva, inequality, high and low, hierarchical. But this time, Swamiji said, we shall make this Vedanta the sheet anchor of our society, a new society which shall evolve, where this Samadarshitva will be there. And when India became free, she adopted a constitution. It is a democratic, republican constitution, in which this Samadarshitva is the very soul. Distinction between man and man as a citizen is abolished. Every citizen 
is equal to every other citizen. We have to look at him or her in that attitude of oneness, some other shift work. We do it during elections. We forget it immediately after the election. We are very Vedantic during election. A particular candidate will go to a poor old Indian woman and say, Madam, please come and vote. This is, we are all part of this democracy. We are one. Like that you will say. And she will be carried probably in a palanquin to go and vote. She has no strength. But even then, she has the same status as anybody else. That is how democracy functions. But, I am sorry to say, it functions only once a while. Afterwards, you are you, I am I. That is the attitude later on. That will change when political democracy is strengthened by spiritual democracy. The great spiritual teachings of Vedanta. When these teachings go to the people, they will realize this is not a mere political arrangement. This is a constant attitude. They have to maintain it, cultivate it. That is how, as a very hope, with Vedanta as a great philosophy behind us, with Swami Vivekananda as expounder of that great philosophy and its practical implications, our democracy will develop that soulfulness which very few democracies have. We have that opportunity this time. So, the next yoga is going to be this subject of some other shitva. And he said here, Brahmana, Pandava, the Pandita, Samadarshina. Panditas are Samadarshis. And we all have the capacity to understand that truth and live according to it. If a leader follows path, we will also follow. If these great people have this Samadarshitva, we will also have it. There is such a thing as imitation in society. Whatever great persons do, we also do. Because of our leaders, practice only inequality all this time. We all practice inequality. The Brahmana practice inequality. And what is the result? Even the Chandala has practiced, is practicing inequality. There is another group of Chandala whom I don't touch. In Baisura, or Bangalore, two types of Chandalas. One will not touch the other. Because they have all followed that original teaching, that example that was given. Now when the example changes to the top, up to the bottom, everything will change. There will be real equality even there. They are called two types of untouchables in Tango. They told me they are called Erade Madhiga, Varade Madhiga. Left hand Madhiga, right hand Madhiga. That is all the distinction. But to them it is very serious. Why? Top people have done it. They are also doing the same thing. When the top people change, they will also change. That's why little change is going on. Little, little, little. But when people become conscious of what they are doing, its immense consequence for human happiness and welfare, they will do it with greater energy and will convert this nation into a land of equals earlier and earlier to live as the equal of others. No superiority, except what is given to you by people's consent. A minister has a certain status, prime minister has a status given by the constitution, given by the people, there is no harm. But even then, he should not think, I am something superior. He must go to the people, become one with them. That is real democracy. So far as socio-political democracy is concerned, the Scandinavian nations are the most advanced in this matter. Even the king of Norway or Sweden will go to the shopping, no kind of traffic jam, nothing is there. They are just like other citizens. There you can see social democracy as a fact. It will take quite a bit of time for us to come to that high level. But that is the goal in this modern age of India's history according to Swami Vivekananda. And therefore, in the next verse, this idea is, in fact, is put in a stronger language. Ihaiva Dajita Sargo Yesham Sarmye Sthitam Mana Nirdosham Hi Samangyarnam 
Parmat Brahmani Pereshka Parmat. This is a very great verse. The soul of this chapter, I shall just translate it and take it up next Sunday for exposition. The high world, here itself, in this world, in this body itself, for Jitas for Go, they have conquered relativity. Yesham Samya Khitam Manaha, whose mind is established in this Samya Khiti, this equality, this what you call oneness. Nirdo Ocean is among Brahma. Brahma is free from all evils and he is equal in all. Tasmat Brahma is a Siddhar. Therefore, they are living in Brahma. They are established in Brahma. The great importance is the Hayvata Jidas Sargo. Here itself, we can realize this wonderful spirit of equality. As I said, this is an important verse. We shall take it up next Sunday when we meet here. We will spend a minute in silence and quiet and then there will be at the temple, those who like can attend.